Good afternoon, good day, and good night, wherever you are in the world right now, and welcome back to Ultimate Eleven. Now, for as long as football has existed, fame, fashion, and fortune have coexisted alongside it. Trends have been set by footballers for better or for worse, only for society to try and replicate these styles, annoying about 97% of the population. So that's why this week we're building our Ultimate Eleven fantasy team based on the footballers with the greatest bites of all time. They looked the part, but did they play the part? Arguably, they're more remembered for their hair than their technical ability. So much like Donald Trump. So, as you regulars will no doubt know already, I quite like the unique and obscure in the footballing nostalgic world. So, many of the obvious haircuts may be saved for another video. Any suggestions, please put them down in the comments below. So, you will not be seeing Brazilian Ronaldo or the Romanian national team of the 90s. So, this week we'll be going for a free fall, free formation, and with any team, we start with the goalkeeper. So, first up is a goalkeeper who is the product of Pablo Escobar's drug infueled football academy in Medellin, Colombia. Rene Higuita was one of South America's first sweeper keepers and was famed for not only his shaggy, unkept mullet, but for one of, if not the most audacious save in history against England in 1996. We all know the one, you know what it is. Don't pretend you don't, you do. Impressively, he scored 44 goals in his career, which is not bad for a keeper at all, retiring at the age of 42 in 2009. He is only 53 as of date, 2020, despite looking at least 88. Perhaps some of Escobar's drugs made their way onto the pitch. Well, they certainly did in 2005 after he tested positive for cocaine. And that's not the only trouble he got himself into. Famously, he missed the 1994 World Cup after getting involved in a kidnapping scandal and being imprisoned for seven months, which is really a miracle that he was able to regain any of his career at all. With that infamous scorpion kick save, the kidnapping, the cocaine, all the goals he scored, and looking like an absolute Martian, surely one day there will be a film about Rene Higuita. Right, let's move on to our defenders. Now, the only American to make the squad, and he's pretty much made a career out of having a haircut and looking like an extra from Lord of the Rings. Of course, it's USA's number one football correspondent, Alexi Lalas. Frequently making the MLS All-Star team, he made his name with Italian outfit Padova. A solid war in defence for any team he played in, famously increased his notoriety at the 1994 World Cup, in the USA and boasts 96 appearances in seven years for his country. Now it's for the youngest and one of the only still active members of our squad, surely with his best years ahead of him and arguably one of the most talented too. Currently on the books at Chelsea but on loan in Germany with RB Leipzig. You've guessed it already, it's Ethan Amper. Do, 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 do. Sorry I won't do that again. Now, Ethan Ampadu used to have a bird's nest on his head, or dreadlocks, which in my opinion are dreadful. He's made more appearances for Wales than any club he's actually played for, and is interestingly from my neck of the woods, and played for Exeter City. Now, this next player, and our last defender, his hair is just indescribable. Kind of short black with green pigtails and braids. I guess he kind of looks like a villain from a weird Studio Ghibli film. Taribo West is certainly more famed for his hair than his talent, despite playing for Inter Milan in the famed 90s period and representing Nigeria at two World Cups. He won the UEFA Cup with Inter and the Serbian National League with Partizan Belgrade. Now for our midfield, and for my personal favourite in fact. People say Germans don't have a sense of humour, but Stefan Effenberg shaved a rather convincing tiger into the back of his head. It actually looked pretty good. His international career never really took off as a player, and arguably his highlights for Germany were the highlights in his hair. See what I've done there? You know, it's pretty clever, isn't it? No? I'll shut up then. His club career was much more prolific, with three Bundesliga titles with Bayern Munich and a Champions League, and a Pokal with Munich and Mochen Gladbach. He made the FIFA 11 in 1997 and was inducted into the Bayern Munich All Time 11. Now for another product of uh, Colombia's drug money and captain of our hair bear bunch, it's none other than Carlos Valderrama, probably the greatest Afro in history and was actually a pretty decent player with 54 goals in 619 club appearances and 11 goals in 111 appearances for Colombia. He was a three-time South American footballer of the year 
And in the year 2000, when Pele was choosing his 100 greatest footballers of the century, he was the only Colombian to get in. A classic number 10 and, in my opinion, a very underrated player. Next up, Abel Javier. Born in Mozambique but played internationally for Portugal, he is probably defined most by his peroxided perm, braids and beard. He never really managed to settle at any one club, with stints at Benfica, PSV, Everton, Liverpool, Roma and Middlesbrough, before moving on to a David Beckham inspired LA Galaxy, which at the time was really all about branding and it was more of a look than a club, so that's probably the only reason he got in, because of his hair, but quite a good trait to have. Now for our last midfielder, we're going with the most decorated player probably in history, and that's not just on his head. Much of the late 80s and most of the 90s, Ruud Hullet was talked about in the same vein as Messi and Ronaldo are now. The Dutch maestro was instrumental to a dominating AC Milan side. So before we get into the stats about him, let's talk about the hair. Clean shaven, with a solid tash, and an unmatched frizzy barnet that seemed to travel in slow motion as he galloped forward. He is regarded as one of the greatest players of all time and was instrumental in the Dutch total football era, preceded and orchestrated by Johan Cruyff and Remus Michaels. George Best is once quoted as claiming he was a better dribbler at the ball than Maradona. He was also the first Dutch manager in the Premier League and the first ever player manager in the Premier League era as well. His accolades include, but are not limited to, two Eredivisie titles with PSV, three times the Serie A title with AC Milan, the Super Cup also with AC Milan, European Cup times two also with AC Milan, and the Coppa Italia, this time of Sampdoria. Of course, he was instrumental in the Netherlands side in 1988, winning the European Championship. He was two times Dutch Player of the Year, Ballon d'Or winner in 1987, he got into the FIFA 11 in 1991, he is named in FIFA's 100 Greatest Players of All Time, he was inducted into the AC Milan Hall of Fame and also the Italian Hall of Fame. Whew. Now on to our attacking three. Now this first striker has played for some of the biggest teams in Italy and has literally won it all. Maybe he should have won a bit more if it wasn't for an infamous penalty miss in the 1994 World Cup, gifting the trophy to Brazil. He was the subject of much abuse after that infamous miss in the World Cup final, instead of his ridiculous stupid hair in which he looked like a low-level Jedi Knight. A permed mullet jeweled with a ponytail, Roberto Baggio will be leading the line for our team here today. He boasts an impressive 220 goals in 490 appearances for all of his clubs, and internationally has scored 27 goals in 56 appearances. Despite the infamous miss, he is still described as one of the most natural goal scorers of all time. He won Serie A titles with Juventus and AC Milan, as well as the Coppa Italia and UEFA Cup. He won the Ballon d'Or and FIFA World Player of the Year in 1993. In the year 2000, he was named as Italy's Player of the Century. If that wasn't enough, Juventus and AC Milan have also inducted him into their Hall of Fames. Now for another 80s legend with a messy and shaggy mullet, whose career was probably defined by having Frank Reichardt's phlegm stuck to the back of his head, not once but twice during the 1990 World Cup, which of course Germany would go on to win. It's a real shame really because Rudi Voller should be much more known for his attacking prowess and is probably one of the most important German players of all time. Averaging a goal every other game over his career with an impressive 257 goals in 542 club appearances and 47 goals in 90 appearances for Germany. He won the Coppa Italia with Roma and the first ever Champions League in 1993 with Marseille and then of course the infamous 1990 World Cup. He managed the national side to the final in 2002, only losing out to Brazil. Now for the final player of this hair raising team. I should really get another job. Anyway, this the lesser known Brazilian striker with a pretty good club record and is still playing in his native Brazil with Corinthians today. Wagner Love has always had quite the unique look with black, blue, red long braided hair, which is quite surprising considering his flamboyant style and success in the harsh conditions of the right wing Mother Russia. With two spells in CSK Moscow and contributing 85 goals in 172 appearances for them, he also had stints with Monaco and Besiktas. Perhaps another underrated strikers, his honours include winning the Russian Premier League title three times with Moscow and the Russian Cup five times. He also won the UEFA Cup and the Cup of America with Brazil twice. He was also top scorer in the Russian and Turkish leagues. 
So now you know what time it is. We're going to construct our squad and glance over once again. Probably let's say what is the most unique team ever to exist. Now they would have to increase their shampoo budget, but I'd say they give any team a good run for their money. So let's go through the squad. In goal, the Colombian sweeperkeeper Rene Hergita. In defence, we have the American Alexi Lalas and Ethan Ampadu, backed up with Nigerian Taribo West. In midfield, we have Stefan Effenberg, Carlos Valderrama, Abel Javier and Ruud Hollett. And leading the line up front are the front three of Roberto Baggio, Rudy Voller and Wagner Love. So that's it this week. Hope you enjoyed creating this Ultimate Eleven. Don't forget to like, subscribe and suggest any ideas you would like to see in the comment section. So until next time, sayonara.